All righty. Now, don't forget, our, our services are on uh, uh, stream off of our website, www.fvc.org. You can get on there and see our... Um, you can see our video podcast, and we have uh, audio podcast, and then you can also pick us up on YouTube. If you've got a Roku box, Dr. Bill set up my Roku box this week. You can watch us on Roku, hallelujah, and uh, see us on in HD on the big screen, hallelujah. I look good at 55 inch, anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> hallelujah. Got to put it up on my big television, hallelujah. HD, we're in, I mean 16.9 ratio, HD, are we 16.9? Yep, 16.9 HD, 720p. We had to scale down on that. Anyway, I'm, I'm a 1080p guy, but, you know, we'll, we'll go with 720. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, you can watch us on the Internet. Uh, if you, so, if you miss a service, you can go pick up the service. Uh, usually that day, uh, within a few hours of the end of the service, you can, you can watch, either watch or listen to us. Um, is, is, is video going out the same day, Bill? Uh, Okay, so video is usually the same day or the next day. Audio is almost always the same day, oh, yeah. within, within minutes at the end of the service. So if you miss a service, and also like if you miss a service and you say, well, I, I wanted to give, there's a donations tab right on our website. You can give through PayPal, use your credit card. If you've got a PayPal account, you can transfer money into our PayPal account. There's just ways you can do stuff. So if you're traveling and, and you know, i, I got to get my tithe in, go out on PayPal, put it in there. We'll, uh, we'll get her. Amen. Amen. It takes us a few days, but, you know, we, we'll still get her. I think it takes like three days or so to, to, for to transfer the money over once it hits the account. All righty. Uh, this time, Children's Church and Preschool, you're dismissed. Hallelujah. And since there's no youth or there's no uh, church, there is no band practice, worship practice, youth worship practice, any kind of practice here at the church tonight. Hallelujah. Unless you just want to come practice. Hallelujah. But I know musicians, they can set up at home and practice. Can't they? All right. Uh, try open your Bibles, if you will, to the second chapter of the book of Acts. It's our foundation text. We're, we should. Everybody say should. We should conclude our teaching this morning on the church and her mission. Hallelujah. So we'll read our foundation text again. We've already covered uh, our main points up to the very this last one. It says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, through verse 45. Of course, I'm not going to find that in Philippians. Glory to God. Philippians is a good book, but it doesn't have 42 verses in the second chapter. Well, we'll back up verse 41. Then they were gladly received, and they, that, and they, well, skip, rewind. All right. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And all and they believed were together and had all things common. They sold the possessions and good and part of them to every, and every man had as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Praise God. Thank God. Amen. Thank God for this. And you can see the points we've gathered for this teaching came out of this passage of Scripture. And so we said the first thing that the church um, one, one, the first thing that the church uh, has is evangelism. And understand this, that evangelism does not mean that you're out um, like, like an evangelist is. Everybody, every, you know, holding an open air crusade, getting 50,000 people saved at a time in the city. That's an evangelist. That's what an evangelist does. The church primarily is going to evangelize one-on-one. -on -one. Members of the church are going to primarily evangelize one-on-one. -on -one. Hello? 
That is their mission. They got one of the biggest church, churches in America right now. It's just an evangelism church. They're not he, guys. Not a, he call, they call them pastor, and they say right in their, their write-ups, if you're coming here to be discipled and to grow in Christ, you're in the wrong place. We're just about winning souls. Then he's not a pastor. They call call him pastor all day long. He's not a pa he's an evangelist. They're just running an evangelistic crusade every week and, and through, and through a, a building and having a building and calling in the church. Now, see, when you get them saved, they got to be discipled. The people have to grow in Christ. That's like, that's like getting every woman you can pregnant and then you're just having babies and throwing them out there and saying, oh, well, make it if you can. We're just about getting people pregnant. Hello? Now, those babies have to be nurtured and taken care of and grow, don't they? I said, don't they? Why? Because if you don't, they'll starve. They'll dry up. They'll, they'll be susceptible to every element there is in, in, in life. They'll be susceptible to disease. They'll be susceptible to, um, to wild animals. I mean, in other words, in other words they, 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 are, they are at a, a stage of uh, the inability to protect and care for themselves. So babies have to, be, have to be nurtured and taken care of and grow. Amen? So just say, we're just about getting people saved. We don't care about discipling them. Well, then you're not a pastor. Hello. Because the local church is about discipling and raising up people and nurturing and taking care of them. Amen. So Jesus didn't say go make, you know, go get people saved. He said go make, go make disciples of all men. Amen. He said make disciples. What do you mean? Train them. I mean, get them saved? Yeah, but bring them up. Teach them. Nurture them. That went over big. So we, we, get miscon we get misconceptions sometimes. Local churches you know, start trying to do what an evangelist does. You can't do what an evangelist does. That's his calling. Amen? Hallelujah. People get confused about things. Thank God for the evangelists. We, we, don't, we don't negate. We thank God for them. They, 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 they do an awesome job. But the church has to nurture them. So evangelism within the local church is primarily one-on-one. -on -one. You know, you know, I'm going to tell you something else. It's not my job to win the lost as far as, the, as being the pastor. Whose job is it? Yours. You can't pay somebody else to do your job. Well, you're the pastor, you go get it done. That's not my job. That won't ever be. It's your job. The Bible says in, in, in the fourth chapter, of the, I, I'm going to get to this, I think. The fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. And that word perfecting in the Greek actually means maturing, growing up of the saints. What for? For the work of the ministry. The saints are to be matured so they can go do the work of the ministry. Amen. Hello? What's the work of the ministry? You go win the lost. Then you help train people. You help disciple people. Amen. Amen. That's the job of the believer. It's not to come to church always to get your need met. To hear another sermon on how to get a new Cadillac. Come on now. Another sermon on how to live victorious this week. And all those things are important to your development and your growth. But that's not, that's not why you're, you're not a Christian just so you can come to church and get another whatever. You're being discipled for the work of the ministry. So many people want to pay somebody else to do their job. They want to pay the pastor, you know. Well, here, I give to that church. You pastor, you go take care of this. That's not my job. My job is to train you and to mature you. You go do it. That's your job. Come on now. You're supposed to be living a witness, being a witness, testifying of Jesus. Which brings us to this. Next Saturday morning at 930 is taking it to the streets. Be here. There's one of those opportunities for you to go do what you're supposed to be doing. Well, I don't like doing that. We're going to send you out with somebody who does. I don't like knocking on doors. We're going to send you out with somebody who does. You can just stand there and look like you you're, 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 you're wish you weren't there. You can just stand there and look like that. Amen? But you need to go. Amen? So be here. Everybody say, I'm going to be here. Three people said it. Come on now. I command you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You got to be here and get out there and go to the streets and do something for Jesus. Amen. It's your, it's your job as the believer to go evangelize. Now you can either say, Amen, oh me, or help me Jesus, but say something. Amen. I still got about 30% participation. All right. 
But some people think, you know, evangelism is, is some big outdoor crusade with loudspeakers and you mark off how many thousands of people showed up. Well, you know, that may work in Africa, but that doesn't work in Greensboro. You got different scenarios. Are you here? In different areas of different things in different countries. I mean, you can't even do that in Asia because of, because of communism. You got to go into underground places. You can't do that. You know, there's just places. You, think, you, you We get this idea of what it is. And uh, you got to get rid of your idea of what it is and follow God's pattern and God's plan. And the local church is going out and winning one-on-one. -on -one. Hello? Setting up a big, you know, whatever, and having the big, big evangelists coming. That may work. It may, I don't know. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. You got to follow God. But the big, the, 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 the thing that you could be consistent about is the individuals, believers in the local church going out and winning the lost. Sharing Jesus. Living Jesus. Being a witness for him. Just now let's be bobbleheads. Somebody find out how we can get a bobblehead, a pastor red bobblehead. Anyway, people riding around town will say, Pastor Red said, and then I said, yeah, he, uh, all right. Y'all think about the food, y'all listening. How many are here? Amen. Three people aren't even here. Didn't even raise their hand. They don't even know they're here. Wait, somebody drag you in here today? You didn't even know it? Well, met, uh, Mr. T, they always knocked him out and put him on the plane. He woke up. Was I on that plane? I pity the fool who put me on there. Anybody get knocked out and drugged the church? Anyway, praise God. The second thing is that they, they unified uh, the unification of the saints around the doctrine of, Christ, uh, of, of, of the apostles. See, when we get people saved, we've got to teach them what the Word says. We've got to disciple them in the things of God. We've got to teach them the doctrine of the church, not of, our, not of your church, but of the Bible, the, the church at large. What the Bible says. Train them up in the things of God. Teach them how to live by faith. Teach them how to walk in the Spirit. Teach them how to flow in the Holy Ghost. Teach them who they are in Christ. Teach them what, it, what walking in love really means. Let me tell you something, honey. Hey, I don't care what's in your heart. If you're not living, that's not good enough. Amen. Amen. Well, just look at, you know, I mean, look, look, I know what's in my heart. Well, if you're not living, that's irrelevant. Because if it's really in your heart, you'll live it. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if there's really things in you, you should be living them. Amen? Well, see, the church is to teach people those things. We're, we're to unify you around the doctrine of Christ, the, the doctrine of the church. When I talk about the church, I'm talking about the church at large, not just a particular local church, you know, uh, and maybe your pet peeves or whatever, or the hottest, newest, latest, greatest. I'm talking about the doctrine of the church. Amen? Third thing we talked about was koinonia, fellowship. How that true biblical fellowship or koinonia in the church starts with the common unity of fellowshipping around our, our relationship with God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. Any eating and going out and doing stuff comes out of that. The eating and the going out and the bowling group doesn't go up. Our, our, our activity fellowships have to come out of or be birthed out of the common fellowship, the common koinonia of being in Christ. And we come together from different backgrounds and different scenarios and different lifestyles and everything you can think of when we got born again. And we all fellowship around one thing, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we talked about that on the third week. And then, I think we talked about it the fourth week too. And then the breaking of bread or communion together. How that we show the Lord's death till we come. We talked about how that, you know, it's in, you know, people are weak, sick, and dying because they're not walking in love. Amen. They're not rightly discerning the Lord's body. Hello? They would have come to the Lord's table and they're ticked off with their brother right, right beside them. Not walking in love. You can't do that. It won't work. Your faith won't work. Hello? You know, I hear people telling me, you know, well, the Lord showed me this, and the Lord showed me that, and the Lord told me this, and the Lord told me that. Brother Hagin said he's had people say that the Lord's told them so much, so much, so many times. He finally said, I'd rather hear a donkey bray in a tin barn at midnight and hear such stuff as that. Hello. Now, I just hearing a donkey bray is enough. Hearing a tin barn at midnight must be really bad. That must be, a, as he would say, a West Texas colloquial expression. I finally figured out, I figured it out this week. West, or Texas, must have been settled by North Carolinians. Because every expression that he uses is something I heard growing up down in Eastern Carolina. So it must have been a bunch of Eastern Carolina folks that went and settled Texas and took all of our colloquies out there and then Texas claimed them. Hallelujah. So our, our last point, these, that, that, that's a quick review of four weeks or five weeks. That was a quick review, wasn't it? 
How, was that quick, too quick? Go back and listen to the sermons. You'll enjoy them. This, the, the last point we're going to make in this teaching on the church on a mission is the powers of the coming world which were mightily active in the church in healing the sick and even raising the dead and victory over demonic powers. You know, I had a, uh, I had a, we had an interesting thing yesterday. I went to see Larry. Larry's up at the hospital. They, they, they had him on some, um, the, some, some things were, were happening. It wasn't, wasn't emergency or anything, but they just wanted to put him in the hospital because they wanted to treat him with something that, that took intravenous, and so he had to be in the hospital for a couple of days to do it. And he's get, is he getting out at noon? Okay. This afternoon, they was going to try to get back here, at least for the fellowship. Well, anyway, uh, we found out when I got up, they said, the Pastor, I'm on the psych ward. The other end of the hallway was a psych ward. Well, you know, with, you know, with, a lot of times the psych wars, you got a lot of demon possessed people. Not everybody, not everybody that's, that's in the psych wars is demon possessed, but a lot of them are. And then you got this woman in the room there, so she just start crying out, all kinds of, you know, what I mean, just, hey, hey. And, he, and he started talk, telling me about that. <coughs> and then one a minute later, she started doing that. I said, well, you know, Larry, you know, you know the Bible says when it says cast out demons, it really means exercise authority over them. I said, now look, you may not be able to cast the devil out of that because they may want it. You've got to find out if they want it to be free. Right. If they want the devil, you can't cast it out of them. Right. I said, we can exercise authority over it. I said, we can tell it you can't manifest while you're in my presence in Jesus' name. And she started that mess up. I said, now watch this. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to seize operation while in my presence. You can't function or operate in my presence. About 10 seconds later, she shut up. I never heard her again the whole time I was there. Now, I don't know if she did it after I left or not. Rest of the night. Not another time. Just you know, shut up. And, you know, just, you are not going, you're not going to manifest in my presence in Jesus' name. We have authority over devils. Now, if people want the devils, you can't cast it out of them. Say, well, I'm going to cast the devil out. Now, if they want them. Some people like, some people like what the devil gives them. That one ever big. Let's go look at Mark chapter 16. Glory to God. Mark 16. The local church has a mission. Amen? Personal evangelism. Glory to God. Being, you've got to be well founded in the doctrines of the, of the church. And you're going to grow in that. It's not going to happen overnight. But you've got to grow in that. You need to have the fellowship of the saints. You can't make it on your own. You, keep, you cut everybody off out of your life and you'll be out there by yourself. You don't have fellowship. Then you know a, three, a threefold cord is, uh, uh, is not easily broken. There's something, the strength that comes from the fellowship of the saints. We, we undergird one another. Every time the disciples got persecuted or got in trouble in the book of Acts, they went to their own company. Amen. Hallelujah. And prayed and got together. What happened? And they got strengthened. We need, we need to fellowship one another. Amen. We need to break bread together. Why? To keep our love walk straight. Because if you're going to judge yourself every time you come to the Lord's table, you'll keep your love walk straight. I'll guarantee you that much. Amen. If you, if you rightly discern the Lord's body, you'll, 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 get, you'll keep yourself straight. Amen. And then the powers of the world to come. Mark 16. Let's back up in verse 14. It says here, And he appeared unto the eleven, and as they sat at meeting, upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. He did not say, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and tell them that they're under grace. They're going to be saved whether they like it or not. He said, you got to believe. Did he say what? He, you got to do what? He said, he that believeth. He that believeth. He that believeth. Amen. And is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow the apostles of the early church. Huh? These signs shall follow them what? Look at your Bible. Them that believe. Isn't that what it says? These signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. Did not say it will follow the apostles of the early church. It says this signs will follow them that believe. Underline that in your Bible. Mark it out. Make a note of it. These are believer signs, not apostle signs. Y'all here, you're going home. Yeah. How many are here? Amen. How many have checked out and gone home? Look, boy, Nathan got mixed up. <laughs> Hallelujah. These signs shall follow them that believe. Undermine them that believe. Underline it. Mark it in your Bible. Make stars beside it. In my name. Now let me say something here, church. 
The reason it's possible to do what he's about to say do is the name of Jesus has authority in the mouth of the believer. We don't have time to teach you the name of Jesus this morning. But I'm telling you, you can't go do it without the name of Jesus. You can't do it in the name of Jesus whom Paul preacheth. Ask the seven sons of Sceva. That one demon-possessed guy whooped them. They ran out of the house butt-naked. Hello? Because he said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? See, they were trying to exercise authority just through a method. But Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that, but now who's Jesus? Anybody know who Jesus is? Second person of the Godhead, the Son of God, God and manifest in the flesh, and he's also the head of the church. Amen. The head of the church said that the signs that follow the believer is that in his name, his name, glory to God, you don't go say, come out, devil, because I'm powerful. Oh, I'm a, I'm a child of God, come out. My name is Ed, come out. None of that means anything. No, in my name, glory to God. The name that is above every name, glory to God. The name of Jesus, hallelujah, whereby knees shall, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father, hallelujah, in his name, glory to God. That name, there, there is no other name under heaven whereby, I mean, I'm, where, 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 uh, there is no other name whereby men must be saved. And also says there is, no, there is no other name for salvation but his name. That's right. what I was trying to get to. I started to requote, requote the same verse a minute. His name. Though cast out devils. Now really the word cast out, translated cast out, is better translated exercise authority over. Demons. See there's one devil, there's many demons. So there's one devil, that's Satan, Beelzebub, Lucifer, there's one devil but many demons. And there's ranks of demons. We'll exercise authority over them. We'll even exercise authority over Satan himself. But the Bible says, so, so let's, let's kind of get rid of the casting out mindset and, and, and gain a mindset of exercising authority over. Because you can't, like we said, you can't cast the devil out of somebody who wants them in there. But you can't exercise authority until you can't work, you can't manifest, you can't function while I'm here. Amen? You're not going to operate in here. Hello? I said, you're not going to operate in here. Parents, your children got devils hanging on them. You can tell them they can't function in your house. You got authority there. Amen? I mean, you can put, you can put, a, you can put the hurting on them. You can't operate like that in my house in Jesus' name. I got authority over you. And don't even deal. Listen, don't even deal with the person sometimes. You got to deal with the devil. Remember when Peter came to Jesus and Jesus said, uh, I mean, and, and Jesus said, um, I, I got to die and be buried, come up on the third day. And Peter said, not so, Lord. And Jesus turned and looked at Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. Didn't even deal with Peter, just dealt with the devil that was trying to influence his thinking. Dealt with the spirit that was trying to influence his thinking. Took authority over it in Jesus' name. Now, parents, husbands, Wives, you need to start exercising authority in your households. I didn't say have a, you know, I didn't say go throw oil all over and watch and turn around the head backwards and talk like uh, Linda Blair did in The Exorcist. I said exercise authority over demons. You just tell them you ain't functioning in my house in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? In my name, they'll exercise authority over demons. They'll speak with new tongues. One guy one time said, that means if you used to cuss, you stop cussing. I thought, dear Lord, what happens to the guy who didn't cuss before? He gets born again and starts to cussing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now he said they'll speak with new tongues. You go, you go study it out. He he's not talking about not cussing anymore. He's not talking about linguistics. Talking about, we talked about in the book, and when he wrote to the church at Corinth, and started talking about, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh mysteries to God. Hallelujah. They'll take up serpents. That doesn't mean you have snake handling services. Hello. Now, next week, you will come, we're going to have baskets up here, they're going to have rattlesnakes in them. We're going to start having snake handling services. I'm joking. Don't stay away just because I said that. I'm joking. A guy named Wendy, uh, uh, Wendy Bagwell they had a group called Wendy Bagwell and the Sunlighters. They were an old gospel group. And they, they, they got invited to go to this country church up in the, mountain, the Appalachian Mountains. 
And they went up there and they said they had to drop extension cords two miles just to run their equipment. Now, I said, being a little bit facetious there, got up on the platform, you know, services going on. They're just a, you know, this old Pentecostal church. And they had some baskets up there and they're just getting the going. And, and I mean, you know, Brother Hagin say rock and roll, uh, you know, rock and roll Pentecostal worship or something, you know. And they got, they get the getting the going. I, and, I, and I love the move of the Spirit myself. But, uh, you know, you can do some things in the flesh or some things in the Spirit. Amen. And, you know, you learn how to distinguish between the two. Amen. And um, he looked there and said, Pastor, said, what's those baskets for? He said, you'll see. And about 15 or so minutes into it, this lady jumped up off the front room and went, ow! Ran up and threw the top off the basket and pulled out a rattlesnake and started dancing with it all over the church. Yeah. Now, you know someone, you know, uh, a pastor's wife died in the past couple, three years. She got bit in the face by a rattlesnake and killed her. Now, what people, they don't ever tell people, they put those guys in the refrigerator before the service. Get them cold. See, a, a snake can't, those, those, those uh, por uh, poison snakes can't inject venom when their body temperature is down to a certain degree. They get them really cold. And so what usually happens is the guy at the back of the church is when he gets bit. Because they've been handling that snake and warming him up. You see, when Jesus said, you know, they'll, they'll take up service, he didn't mean, it mean baskets on the platform with snake handling services. To prove you've got faith. No, he just, Satan tried that on Jesus, said, throw yourself down from here, unless you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It's also written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So anyway, Wendy Bagwell leaned over to that pastor and said, uh, he said, where's the back door? <laughs> pastor said, we don't have one. He leaned back over and said, where do you want one? <laughs> <laughs> He's getting ready to create one for him. Praise God. Now, taking up serpents is like when Paul put the wood on the, on the Isle of Miletus, and he put the wood on the fire, and a, fire, a serpent came out and laid hold of him, and they, they waited for him to swell up and die. He had just shaken it off in the name of Jesus and lived, didn't die. That accidental, you don't, don't deliberately get bitten. You don't drink, and then it goes on and says, if they drink any dead thing, it shall not harm them. You don't drink strychnine to prove you got faith. That's stupid. That's tempting God. That's like going ahead in the middle of the interstate and saying, I'm covered by angels, I'm covered by angels. They'll, they'll, you know, boom! They'll be calling that new truck, they'll call it Mac truck, they'll be calling the Ed truck. <laughs> you know? Instead of Peter built, Ed built. Different truck lines have, you know? You'll be the hood ornament on, on the, you'll be the latest hood ornament going down the road. Look at something like this. No, when he's talking, these are supernatural signs. Amen? Amen? You'll exercise authority over demons. Hallelujah. Amen? You'll speak with new tongues. You'll take up serpents. You'll drink any other thing and it will not harm you. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. These are supernatural signs and wonders that should be following the believers, the church. Amen? <coughs> Amen? Isn't that right? So then he goes on the next verse. Says, so, they, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up in the heaven and sat at the right hand of God. They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Jesus commissioned the church as a miraculous supernatural church. We are not commissioned to be persuaders of men's thoughts. To out-argue them on an intellectual level. Come on now. We are not called to Christian debate as to whether or not God is God. We are to preach the gospel and then let the head of the church confirm the gospel with signs following glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you here or are you going home? We have relegated the church to a debate operation. We, we want to convince people they should follow Christ just because, we said he, just because we said so. We are not called to out reason other people. We are called to preach what the word says and leave it there in the Lord's hands to confirm with signs following. You can't out reason some people. When it comes to debate skills, there are people who are more skilled than you. <coughs> are you here? 
That's what college professors do. They get, they get all these skulls full of mush in their classrooms, and they got, they got tenure, and they, they come in there with an objective to destroy everything you believe, tear you down, and then rebuild you what they think you should believe. There's nothing wrong to be challenged on what you believe, but I'm telling you, what, what the, the agenda of the, of, the, uh, of the humanist college professor and, their, and, and the, the pinko, commie, liberal, left-wing, radical lunatics in 95% of our colleges, classrooms, they don't want to tear them down to build them back up with a belief in God. They want to tear them down and build them back up with a belief in nothing. That's their, that's their agenda. They have an agenda. That's what tenure is all about, so you can't fire them when they do stuff that nobody likes. When they can achieve tenure. That's what they are. And then, then, then they get really crazy. So much so that one of our college campuses up north in the past few years named one of their buildings after uh, Lenin. Vladimir Lenin. Now, I mean, 40 years ago, some of the, the, the people in this country probably would burn that building down. Hello? And anybody that was under Lenin that was alive would have burned it down. If they could have gotten to it. Hello? We're not here to reason with people. We're here to preach the gospel. Are you here? I said we're here to preach the gospel. Glory to God. We're, to call, we're called to go preach the truth and to preach the gospel. And then, to, you know, if people want to argue, I don't, uh, I like Brother Higgins says, I don't argue with idiots. Amen. I'm not here to argue with people. Uh, the Bible says, he to come to God must believe that he is and he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. You don't believe, I'm not going to spend my time talking to you. Oh, pastor, you got to win them to the Lord. Nope, I had to preach the truth. I said, did you notice it said when we read there in the book of Acts, out of our main text, Acts chapter 2, it said, and, 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 uh, and the Lord added to the church daily? Didn't say the apostles added to the church daily. It said the Lord added to the church daily. Such as should be saved. The Lord added to the church. The Lord added to the church. You're not called to win them. You're called to preach the truth. You're called, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believes is saved. He that doesn't believe is damned. And it's kind of matter of fact. That's still right there here. It's pretty matter of fact. Isn't that kind of straightforward? You're called to go preach. They have a choice to believe or not. If they don't believe, tough. They have a choice to make. Your responsibility is to preach the word. Not water it down and make it palatable and hope that they'll join the church and put another back in in the seat so you can go tell everybody how many numbers you got running and that your, your method and your model is successful. Those butts in the seats don't mean anything unless them butts are saved butts. Sorry. Was that too rough? Hello? If they're just a number, they're just a number. We're to preach the gospel. We're to go tell them, repent. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. You believe on him and you'll be saved. Glory to God. You don't, you're going to hell. Nobody wants to talk about hell anymore. We don't want to talk about hell. That would scare people away. However you can get them in. We don't want them going to hell. Hello? You can't deny hell and hope people go, come to heaven. You know, Jesus talked about hell. He did. A bunch. He basically, he said, he, he go on and say, well, right here he said, he that believeth shall be saved, he that believeth not shall be damned. See, we've got to preach the truth. We've got to stop trying to be cute. Are you here? God sent Jesus Christ as a perpetuation for your sin. If you believe on him and confess him as Lord, you'll be saved. If you don't, you will die and go to hell. They might get mad at you. I don't believe in hell. I'm tired of you Bible thumpers shoving it down my throat. That's fine. I was told to come preach. It's up to you whether you believe or not. It's up to the Lord to confirm it with signs following. I've done my job. My job is to preach the truth. In love, you don't go out there mad at them. You don't go out there hoping they'll go to hell. Hello? You do it in love. I mean, really, if you're going to go out there and try to share the truth with people, you've got to do it because you love them because you don't want them to go to hell. 
But you can't win them by arguing and reasoning and, you know, and having great long debates and talking about the Shroud of Turin and whether or not the, you know, the tomb is really the tomb of Jesus. Is it the Protestant tomb or the Catholic tomb? Which one's the real tomb? I mean, what did Josephus have to say? I mean, I'm glad they talked about it, but you know, Josephus is not an authority on the Bible. He didn't say go preach Josephus. He didn't go say, preach the Shroud of Turin. He didn't say go find some archaeological dig so people can have intelligent faith. Faith, I mean, faith just goes beyond intelligence anyway because it's of the heart and not of the head. He said go preach the gospel. He that believes shall be saved and he that believes not shall be damned. And there shall be signs following the believers. Hallelujah. Exercising authority over devils. Speaking in new tongues. Taking up serpents. Drinking deadly things and not harming them. Laying hands on the sick and them recovering. The church shall be a supernatural church. Instead now we want to bottle up the supernatural because the mayor might show up. We want to be accepted by uptown folk. We don't want to offend anybody with our belief that Jesus is a, the, the miracle worker. There's still power and miracles and signs and wonders in the church. We try to hide all that now in the back room on a Thursday night when ain't nobody there. Close all the windows and pull the, shirt, the curtains. Put a guard outside the door because somebody might find out what we're doing down there. I mean, somebody speaking in tongues. We got, we got sound mufflers. So we don't want anybody to hear somebody speaking, speaking in tongues in the church. Might run them off. That's nothing new. Back when Dad Hagen, remember, remember the vision he had where Jesus laid the, right, uh, finger, the finger of his right hand in the palm of his hand and said, I've given unto thee a special anointing, a healing anointing? He said to lay hands on the sick. He said, and when you, he said, you tell them, you tell the people I sent you. Tell the people I laid the, f the finger of my right hand in the palm of your hands. And said, tell them, I said unto you, I've given them to thee a special anointing to, to lay hands on the sick and have them recover. He said, when you tell them that, and they believe that, they'll be healed in their bodies. Glory to God. And, 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 he said, and he said, and whenever you talk about it, whenever you start telling them that I told you that, he, that, you, that, hand, that power will start uh, burning in your hands. Did you know that he shared that in a, in a, in a, um, in a, um, a kind of like a district meeting with, with uh, they had kind of, put a, kind of like a district meeting of, of a member of uh, ministers and their churches from his denomination at the time that one of them got together and called all the men together and wanted to put him out of the, out of the denomination because he said he could feel the power of God in his hands. It's a Pentecostal denomination. 20 years after its founding coming out of Azusa Street. And they wanted to put him out because he said they he, he said he could feel the power of God in his hands. It's nothing new. I said this is the new that people get uptight and offended and upset, you know. And uh, he said so we went, they said, he said we need to call him in here and defrock him. They said and all the men there said you know what we're right you're right we're all in favor of calling him in here before us. And asking him, ask him to come to our churches and hold another meeting. Glory to God. Because <laughs> he'd been in every one of those guys' churches. <laughs> and, and it really upset this one guy because he was, he was wanting to defrock him. They all would go call him in and ask him to come to another meeting in their church. <laughs> Hallelujah. They said, you know, he, everything, one of them said, I've, I've been around him so long. And he, he, every, time, every time he says something that's come to pass, he said, if he told me the sun's coming up in the west in the morning, I'd get up and look west. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, he, he's being a little facetious or, you know, exaggerating for the point, make, purpose of making the point. But anyway, my point is this. This stuff is not new. People getting offended over the power of God, that's not new. Ministers uptight over the power of God. Scared it's going to scare somebody. We're, we always act like that if we compromise everything, we'll, 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 we'll garner more favor. Now, all you'll do is you'll, you'll play, let me, now let me say, how many of you know politics? Now I'm just going to use John McCain as an example. Now, he ran for, he ran for president. Now, now, back before he ran for president, he was the darling of the news media. Now, you know, you, our, our news media has a, a, a left to far left leaning propensity. They're, they're not even left to center, center to left. They are left to left left. The major, the major news media is. There's, just no, there's no doubt about it. I mean, polls have been done. I mean, you know, uh, analysis has been done by, by independent groups. The, the majority of the mainstream media is extreme left-leaning. And so, but, but McCain being Republican was the darling of them because he, he would say things they liked. 
And they just, they'd have on their shows and they'd use him against conservatives or right-wing people. They'd use his statements against them because he was, he, was, he was considered in that particular party and they would use his statements against him because he was the darling. As soon as he ran for president and started taking a, a center to right position on all, all those things in order to get his base, the, the base of the right to support him, they came at him like a pack of wolves. And let me tell you something. When it, it's, that always happens. Anytime you compromise to placate people, you'll be their darling for a season until you have to make a stand. And then they'll eat you for lunch. They'll be red, red-bellied piranha on you. Hello? I watched, them, I watched those guys take out a fish the other day on one of them channels. I was like, my God, that was nothing but, I mean, they took that thing down in just a few seconds. <laughs> Bone left. Hello? We're talking about the head bone and the skeletal bone and the little fin bone. The little bones were all gone. I mean, cleaned it out. I'm glad I won in the water. Hello? Amen. You can't compromise. You're called to preach the gospel. We're called to preach the gospel. I said we're called to preach the gospel. Amen? Luke 24, 49. We have a commission by the head of the church to go preach the good news to people. Amen? And not, and not lie around and act like a bunch of weenies. This is, he's not coming back for the weenie church. He's coming back for the glorious church. Come on, church, say amen. I said he's coming back for the glorious church. There's nowhere in the Bible I can find he's coming back for the weenie, wet noodle backbone church. Amen. Luke 24, 49. Um, well, back up here. Verse 44. These are the words I spake with you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled that were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then he opened their understanding that the scriptures might, uh, that, to, that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is behooved uh, Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. <laughs> what? <laughs> repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. I'll tell you, a lot of people don't want to talk about repentance anymore. They run from it. Anyway. Preach in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and these things you are witness, and you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you, but tarry in Jerusalem, in the city of Jerusalem, until you be endued with power from on high. Amen. Glory to God. Look over in Acts chapter one. <clears throat> Luke wrote Acts. <coughs> <clears throat> Acts 1, 4, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Wait, isn't that what he just was saying there in Luke 24? But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you've heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. When they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? He said, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power, dunamis, miracle power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Glory to God. Notice, now, now um, I used to, I mean, Bill, me, me and Brother Bill used to have a dis dispute along this lines. I used to believe the church started on the day of Pentecost. Brother Bill believed it started when Jesus breathed on them and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. I've since changed my thinking. I've seen more light. I believe that the church started when Jesus said, Be receive you the Holy Ghost. They were born again. And the, but he still said, go wait until you be endued with powerful and higher to that the Holy Ghost has come on you. Amen. Well, is Brother Bill right? Know the words right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, he said, go wait in Jerusalem until you be in with power from on high. And what's the power going to do? It's going to make you a witness. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of it. We got people wanting to go out and do all kinds of stuff somewhere else and never want to do anything at home. Hello. I, I, we support missionaries. We support different things. 
Amen. I mean, we support Raymond. Raymond alone has got 104 Bible schools around the world. I think it's moving to 120 this year. They're getting ready to start one. I forgot. Jesse just sent me a thing where they're getting ready to start another one. And it's in some, I mean, Indonesia. <coughs> Bali. Indonesia. They're getting ready to start a Raymond Bible training center. Muslim country. The Muslim country. We need to pray for uh, Raymond, Nigeria. The Muslims have declared jihad on all the churches in Nigeria. All the pastors to kill them, burn the churches. We don't think that the bunch of Muslims running down around in America don't have the intention. To, oh, they're just Muslims, you know. Da, 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 we, they're just another religion. They're, they, they're, they're, here's two methods. Number one method is if they can just destroy a country, they will. If they're not big enough and powerful enough within the country to destroy it, they will assimilate in society until the point they reach the point they can overthrow the country. That is how they work. That is their method. That is their message. They will be nice. They'll be friendly. They'll be whatever until they get enough Muslims in the country to overthrow the country. We already had our, our, our country, uh, the Supreme Court, throw down, throw down Oklahoma's law. They can't know you share a law in determining cases in Oklahoma. Now, what's wrong with that? There is nothing in our Constitution that permits Shia law. Why should they be allowed? I'm telling you. We need to be praying. For, we need to be praying. Amen? Well, anyway, we, su we support Rainbow Bible Training Center or Kenneth Hagin Ministries. They got, I think we're moving to 120 schools this year. This year we have over 10,000 students in Rainbow Bible Training Center worldwide. Somewhere, all the schools put together, we got over 10,000 students this year. Glory to God. There's a revival going on in Brazil. They're moving into Colombia and Peru. Hallelujah. Moving over into, we're moving in the Orient. Hallelujah. In Africa. Glory to God. We, you support that. We support that. We support living water teaching uh, down in Guatemala and all they do down in Central America and, and, and their Bible schools and everything that they're doing and they're feeding. And then we support Shekinah glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They're, they're, they're going into the churches and strengthening the saints. And that this year and the next year or so, they're going to be going into 50, all 52 states. 52 states. All 50 states. God knows. At least I didn't say 57. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, know, I know. All 50 states. I mean, we've got Puerto Rico and Washington, D.C. They so those are our other two states. Hallelujah. They, they kind of are, but they're not officially. Um, you know, and so we, we have, you know, we're supporting, so we're doing that. But you know what? Take it at the streets. We need you here. We need you here to go out and knock on doors. We need you here witnessing. We need you doing stuff at work. Why? Because we have to reach our Jerusalem. Amen. And our, and our Guilford County. And our state and the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. But Jesus said, don't you do any of it. Until you're endued with power, dunamis. Why? Go back to Mark's gospel. In my name. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. See, the church is to be a supernatural, miraculous church. We're called to the supernatural. We're called to the miraculous. We're called to walk in the power of God. Not just the, you know, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, too often we have, we have uh, relegated that to the, the man of God. I mean, the great preacher who blows in, blows up, and blows out. Hallelujah. We go out and buy all of his tapes and books and t-shirts on his product table. <clears throat> and listen to him talk about all the power of God he has in his life. And in that, let me tell you something. Church, we have to have it in the church, in the individuals in the church. Because the church itself is to be a miraculous place. Yeah. You should be getting your neighbors healed. Your co-workers healed. Yeah. I had a revival in that barbecue restaurant down in Eastern Carolina just from laying hands on sick people. They started getting, they didn't come to our church. Well, so what? They got saved and went to church. Got involved in the church. Born again. Hallelujah. God didn't say, you know, go lay hands and sit there, recover, and they'll come to your church. Amen. God will get, to get people to, into your church, our church. We just, but we got to be faithful about what God's called us to do. Amen. We got to be bold. Amen. Paul prayed and said, you know, that God would grant, you know, pray for me that God would grant me boldness that I've opened my mouth and proclaim the gospel. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Boldness. Glory to God. I'm telling you, we gotta be, we've got to return once again to being the supernatural church. 
the church full of authority and walking in the power of God and doing the works of Jesus. Praise God. We are called to be the miraculous church. Amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1 verse 22. Um, it says here, um, well, actually, 1 8 says this. Oh, yeah, you will receive power after the Holy Ghost come on you, verse 22. And um, forget, the, forget Acts 1 22. That's not what I'm after. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. That's, I think it was after Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Got my numbers mixed up here. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heavens of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. That was not that little big lighter on their heads, folks. Some people draw that picture, got like a little big lighter flick you know, thing up here. This is the glory of God. It, it appeared as fire. The glory of God often appeared as fire. Remember when the mount would burn with fire? Well, that was, that was the glory. Remember in the wilderness, they had a pillar of fire by day and a cloud by night? I mean, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night? Amen. In the desert, well, that's, that's, that makes sense. The cloud kept them from getting too hot and the fire kept them from getting too cold. Amen. But the glory often appeared. It will appear as a cloud or as fire. Hallelujah. And um, sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Jump over here. And they were dwelling in uh, Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when they were, this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Because they heard every man heard, heard him speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another. Now, listen, when you read this, there's about 17 people, um, 17 different races listed here. And there's 120 people in that upper room. And each one heard them speak in their own language. That's a miracle. That, that alone is a miracle. Now, that, there was a miracle on their ears to hear. Amen. And they were amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, not all these that speak Galileans. <laughs> and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers in Mesopotamia, Judea, Judea uh, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phygia, uh, Pamphylia, in Egypt, in the parts of Libya, and Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Creeds and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? And others mocking. You always got the mockers. These men are full of new wine. There was a drunk. Peter stood up with eleven and said, lifted up his voice, said unto them, Ye men of Judea, Judea, and ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and be hearken unto my words, for these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing as but the third hour of the day. Now the third hour of the day would be about nine o'clock. The Jewish Jewish day started around six AM. So they thought this is about nine o'clock in the morning. Either they were drinking all night or they got up real early and started drinking if they were drunk on, on wine. But Peter says, We're not drunk like you think we're drunk. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days it shall come to pass, uh, uh, that in the last, it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, and you own your servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Hallelujah. And I'll, I'll show wonders in the heavens above, the signs in the earth beneath, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass. Ooh, what, notice, what, notice what he said. It shall come to pass, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now stop right there and back up two verses. What was going on before men started calling on the name of the Lord? Signs and wonders. I said signs and wonders. Didn't say a thing about anybody having intelligent faith. He said, I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath. And then it says, then it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm telling you, there's something, there is something about witnessing and sharing Jesus and then having signs and wonders follow that brings people to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, why can't they just have intelligent faith? Because God said he'll show signs and wonders. He never said, go have intelligent faith. I've talked with people. Well, I believe in intelligent faith. I believe in Bible faith. Thank you very much. I don't believe in being intelligent about it. I believe in being biblical about it. Amen. Now, I didn't say be an idiot. But I don't, my faith doesn't start in my head. It starts in my heart. Amen. I said it starts in my heart. It doesn't start in my head. It abides in my heart. It doesn't abide in my head. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ye men of Israel, verse 22, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved, listen, approved of God among you. Listen, 
approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Y'all got your Bibles up looking at that? Amen. Look at that. It says, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved among you, approved of God among you. Underline this now, church. You need to get this. How did God approve Jesus' ministry? By miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves know. Woo! We're not going to finish today. I'm about halfway through all my stuff for this particular point. The approval of the ministry of Jesus was done by God working wonders and signs by Jesus. These signs shall follow them that believe. Hello? We're so busy trying to figure out how to trick people into coming to church and trick them into staying in our churches and get them connected in some type of social group and making soul ties with people. We're missing the mark on how God approves the ministry of the church. By wonders and signs. Hello? I'm going to tell you, you ain't going to have a real hard time getting folks to follow the Lord if, you, if they get healed of cancer. If you lay hands on their child and they get delivered from, you know, uh, some kind of deadly disease or something. We had, we had a neighbor. You know, they, they moved to Atlanta. They were, but they all, you know, and I'll tell you something, you know, they, they were probably marginal Christians. But, you know, they, they, they had stopped in our driveway one day with the kids. Our kids were young, and, they, they, and, their, and their daughter was there. And their daughter had been um, um, diagnosed with epilepsy, bad case of it. And, and the mother was talking to my wife. And I was standing out there, and, and I was kind of listening to the conversation. And I said, well, would you, do you mind if I pray for your daughter? They knew, they knew we were pastors. Well, no, I don't mind. So I just laid down and began to pray. And I took authority over that epilepsy. I commanded that to stop working in her life in the name of Jesus. And I tell you what, I mean, I, pray, you know, I didn't pray no. Uh, Lord, help this family deal with this tough situation. Oh, God, you know that you have a purpose in putting this on that child. Oh, Lord, help that poor dear child through this difficult place. No, I took authority over that. When she gave me leave to pray for that child, I went for it. Man, I got done, she's, tears are pouring down her cheeks. And then I gave her instruction. I said, now look, you, if at the first sign of any, any epileptic or seizure trying to come, you say, no devil, no devil. My child's the healed of the Lord. I take authority over that. You can't manifest. You can't function in my child. She's healed because, because uh, Pastor Ed Taylor laid hands on her on such and such day and prayed over her. She's the healed of the Lord in Jesus' name. They, they came back and visited about, about a year later. And we, kind of, we saw them out and visiting some of the other neighbors. Went down and talked to her and said, you know, ask her. I said, now, now has she had any, any more problems? I said, well, well, a couple times when I did what you said. And it would stop. And I haven't had any contact with it since then. But I'm telling you, there's power in prayer. When you pray under the authority of the head of the church and you believe in miracles, signs, and wonders and you pray according or speak or lay hands on, I mean either prayer or laying hands on and you follow the, the, the authority of the head of the church, Jesus Christ's ministry was approved of God by many wonders and signs. Hallelujah. That's right. That God wrought through him. Hallelujah. The church is approved by signs and wonders being wrought through the body of Christ by God. What did God say? What did the Word of God say in Acts 10, 30, 10 38? Look over there. Look in your Bible. Look in Acts 10, 38. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all those that God had made sick so he could prove he was God. 
Now we teach it. That's what people believe. God put it on them so Jesus could take it off, so Jesus could prove he was the, he was the Son of God. You know, here you go home. Now, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing what? Good. Well, if Jesus healed and he went about doing good, then healing's what? Good. Healing's good. Amen? Amen. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Now who did the oppressing? Who did the healing? The power, the, listen, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. And that, that Holy Ghost anointing and power, now remember, where he was, a, he was God, he could do whatever. No, he stri according to Philippians, he stripped himself of his rights to deity and the glory and walked among us as a man anointed. He did not do what he did as God. He did it as a man under the covenant. He was God. He never stopped being God. You understand that? But he stripped of himself of his right to use it. What's that? Um, you, you've seen movies where they do this. You know, the, the king. Well, there was some book that Nathan had to read a couple years ago where the, where the, 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 the uh, prince that was going to be, become king traded places with a, with a peasant. Remember that book? Huh? <laughs> prince and the Pauper. Yes. You, yes, you did. You had to write a report on it and all that stuff. All right. Prince and the Pauper. Yeah, he stripped us, but just by going out there, and he was treated just like everybody else, although he was a king. Jesus stripped himself of his rights to deity and the glory. He's still deity, but he didn't use that to do what he did. He did what he did as a man under the covenant by obeying, obeying the word of God and doing the word of God and fulfilling that. And God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power. When did he get anointed with the Holy Ghost? When he was baptized in the River Jordan. A dove came and sat upon him. Hallelujah. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, whom I'm well pleased. Hallelujah. And he was anointed with the Holy Ghost. Remember when you read the book of Luke, in the fourth chapter, it starts out and says that Jesus went into the wilderness being full of the Holy Ghost. After the river, after he's baptized in the river Jordan, the Holy Ghost came on him. Back, uh, go into Luke chapter 4, and it says this. It says that, the, uh, that he being led of the Spirit into the wilderness, being full, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. You look, mark that down, Luke chapter 4. Write it down somewhere. He was tempted of the devil. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, prior life. He said, it's written, it's written, it's written. He overcame everything. And then when he comes back out, it says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Amen. He went from being full to the power. He had proven his mettle in the wilderness with the anointing he had. And when he came out, he came out in the power. And the first thing he does, he runs over to the synagogue, grabs the scroll, opens up to the prophet Isaiah, and says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. And Acts 10, 38 says that God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Remember over there in... Um, when Jesus they had the woman was bowed over and, they, and she came to Jesus and they got mad. They're going to see if he's going to heal on the Sabbath day. And Jesus looks at them. He gets mad. He said, which of you having a donkey that falls into a ditch won't go loose him from the, from the ditch on the Sabbath day? And all, not this woman whom Satan hath bound. Lo, these 18, or 15 or 18 years, I forget now. Years be loose from her infirmity on the Sabbath day. Who bound her? Satan. Satan. I'm telling you, God has anointed the church to go set the captives free. God has anointed the church to deliver the captives. And we are to be the miraculous, supernatural, Holy Ghost church. Come on, church. We're to be full of power and faith, doing the works of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Weenie church won't get it done. Trying to be cool and cute won't get it done. If there is no power, it doesn't matter what else you do. If you don't, if you don't exercise the authority you have as a believer, nothing else you do matters. 
I just had talked to a pastor the other day and he said he heard of a church somewhere that has stogie night. Now wait till you hear the whole thing. They get together, the men get together and smoke stogies and drink beer. And you wonder why we, why we don't have any power in the church. Why people don't think the church is any different, you know, than, 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 the, than the crazy religions of the world. I mean, you know, half of Hollywood is, is Scientologist. And, and R. Ron Hubbard, L. Ron Hubbard made that up back in the 70s. Just made it up. Wrote a book called Dianetics. And every week they play, you know, uh, whatever truth number 422. By L. Ron Hubbard's exciting book. Was it Dianetics? Is that what it's called? Yeah. On Dianetics. And it has become an actual religion, and he made it up. We're under, the, under, the, under the pretense that he could make up a religion and people would follow it. In Australia, are you ready for this? There are Jedi Knights. They are practicing Jedi. <laughs> Am I lying, Brother Bill? They put it on their tax returns. They put it on their tax returns. <laughs> they are practicing Jedi. That's also good point. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. <laughs> it is. It would be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. Yeah. It is funny. It is funny. I mean, you watch Star Wars. Next thing you know, you're going around going, "I don't have to pay for my meal." I don't have to go to school. <laughs> You're in love with me. <laughs> yeah. And the reason all this works is because the church is impotent. Yeah. Hello? Are you here? We're not producing anything. Uh, 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 C.M. Ward went to his denomination. Well, actually, he's on television, on Christian television. I'm going to close here. We're going to pick up next week. We're going to be back on this next week. Sorry. Hallelujah. C.M. Ward got on the major Christian television network that goes all over the world before he passed away. Back, this is back in the 80s. Mid-80s or so. And he goes, the such and such church, this denomination, must be on the pill. And the host kind of looks at him startled. Says, well, 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 Brother Ward, what do you mean? Now, you guys should see him. Ward helped start that denomination. He was one of the found. He's in the founding group. He's one of the. I mean, he's like the most respected. His 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 uh, newsletter called the uh, the Evangel or something like that. I mean, he's like he's a stalwart pillar in that denomination. He's also a bull in a china shop. You couldn't do anything with him. Those, those, those old guys. If they mess with him, the whole denomination would have a, have a revolt. You understand that? He said the sim. <laughs> The such and such must be on the pill. He said, what do you mean, Dr. Ward? He said, because they haven't given birth to anything in years. <laughs> well, of course, the headquarters got hurt wind of it. And they called him in on the carpet. And they sat him down in the middle of them. He said, now, Dr. Ward, uh, we've called you in because we understand that you got on such and such television program. And you said that we, the such and such uh, uh, denomination, must be on the pill. Because we haven't given birth to anything in years. He sat there for a second. He, <laughs> he's got to love the, the boldness of some of these guys who just walk with God and didn't give a rip about some young whippersnapper who didn't know his head from a hole in the ground. He said, ha! That's how he talked. Got, got, kind of got old. He said, ha! It's amazing what a man will say when he's under the anointing. <laughs> what do you do with him? <laughs> you put him out and you'll lose half your, half your denomination. You know? <laughs> I guess all they would think is hopefully, hopefully he, he just goes on quicker. You know, I mean, the man, you know, you sit in the presence. Of, you know, sat, I sat in the presence with Lester Summerall and had dinner in, in, with him in a group of ministers. I mean, small groups, 10 or 15 people. You know, sat in the room with C.M. Ward. Glory to God. Been in their presence and hear them talk. I'm telling you, these men knew God. These men walked with God. Brother Ward talked about how they used to ordain ministers. Now how they used to ordain ministers? They'd bring them into the room and they'd all the men, all the older men of the denomination would sit around them. They'd put them in a the circle. And they'd just look at them. And they'd sit there. And they'd look at them. And they'd sit there. They said, 
And somebody said, well, what were they doing? He said, we were discerning them. They were listening to the Holy Ghost. They weren't looking to see what their credentials were as far as how eloquent they were in speech and what great ideas they had for ministry. They were listening to the Spirit of God to see if there was anything in them that wasn't, that wasn't right for them to be in the ministry. Paul said, lay hands on no man suddenly. He's talking about ordaining. In the book of Acts, when Paul and Barnabas were separated into the ministry out of, out of that church in, at, at uh, Antioch, it said the Holy Ghost, as they fasted and prayed, the Holy Ghost says, separated them to be Barnabas and Saul for the work wherein to have called them. Church got to get back to walking in authority, power, and in the Holy Ghost. Amen? amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for our time together. Thank you that Jesus is Lord. Thank you that we walk according to the holy word of God. And we know, Father, we'll finish this next week. I know we didn't get it all done. But Lord, I, ch I thank you that by your spirit, you're going to challenge this church to rise up, to walk in our authority, walk in our place, walk in our calling, walk in the power of God, and get the job done in the earth that you've called us to do in the name of Jesus. I speak a stirring in the hearts of men and women. I speak a stirring in the I speak life over them. I speak taking their place in authority. I speak rising up as a man or woman of God. Walking in faith in the Holy Ghost. Preaching your word and signs following in Jesus' name. I rebuke the authority of Satan working in the lives of people. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Change. Oh, hallelujah. For many, many. Direction is coming from the Lord. You have floundered. You have wandered. And in some cases, just kind of sat back and said, I'm just not going to do anything. But the Lord's stirring you. The Lord's speaking to you. There are things you've laid aside, he says, pick up again. There are things you rejected, he says, you will not move forward until you take those up again. Take your place. Walk in your authority. Fulfill the will of God. And great will be your reward, says the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Amen. 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 How many love Jesus?